The nostalgia now, three great fielders who had a real impact in their respective eras. We start with the great South African Colin Bland. In the 1960s, there was a rainy day at Canterbury. What does he do? He decides to put on an exhibition. He's going to put up all three stumps and then he tries to knock them all out with three consecutive throws. At Canterbury on that 1965 tour, the last one by a South African side, Bland demonstrated his deadly accuracy. Colin Bland was the greatest fielder I've seen. What tremendous speed to the ball and an incredible accuracy. He threw that through Jim Parks' legs. Twenty years on, and the crowds here were watching the effervescence and predatory skills of one of the game's real characters, Derek Randall. And a tremendous catch. Almost picked that up in the dark. It's a happy, jovial, smiling Randall who snapped up Bryant at cover point. Malone pushed that. If it hits, it'll be close. And he's run him out. Superb bit of cricket there by Randall. He's even applauding himself. He's over the moon. He absolutely loves it. Well, one felt that uh, Malone was taking a chance there because Randall coming in like a hare and in fact time to steady himself and judge the throw very accurately indeed. And again miscued and beautifully fielded by Randall. And if it hit the stumps it must have been out. A lovely piece of fielding. Throwing and judgment. And also a little admonishing word uh, to say where on earth was the fellow who should have been behind the stumps at the boulder's end? And very quick work there by Randall. Brilliant piece of work. McCusker run out back in it. And you won't see anything much quicker than that on any cricket field in the world. England boys absolutely delighted. What a tremendous piece of field. And the shattered, disillusioned, disgusted McCusker. Disgusted with himself for backing up so far when Randall was swooping in. Really, uh, it's pushing the edge, setting off for a single. McCosker goes and has to come back. And look at the speed of Randall there. Just the one wicket to aim at. And that's hammered away through Randall's hand. Uh, really swift on the chase and uh, exceedingly well to keep him down to one run it's in the air Derek Randall is under it he's taken it safely and the ashes are regained by England for only the third time this century Our next piece was filmed a few years ago when he was still playing. This is a real treat, the amazing Jonty Rhodes. I've really loved what I've done and I think it shows. You know, you, you don't mind putting in the hard work and all the extra effort if you're really enjoying what you're doing because then it doesn't seem like hard work. But I've never gone out there saying, well, I can't bowl, so let me go and, and make sure my fielding will give me the edge with another batsman. I mean, I've, I've really just thrown myself around, having a lot of fun on the field and putting in a lot of practice and a lot of effort because it's, I think it's an art nowadays. John T. Quick, he's brilliant, isn't he? Brilliantly, brilliantly caught by John T. Rhodes, who else? My philosophy on, on fielding practice, not just fielding, my cricket practice, something my dad drummed into me at a really young age was practice like you're going to play. Okay, so I probably get more grass burns and I mess up my laundry more in practice than I do in the game. Because if it's not done right, how are you going to do it in the game? You know, people always say, well, save yourself for the game. There's no point in not diving here and expect to take brilliant catches out in the middle. So what I do with this drill now again, it's a goalpost. The coach has got a bat and he's trying to beat me. 
All right, now I might not catch every ball. I'm just trying to stop it, but I'm going to practice basically like it's a match situation, and that's the key. You'll notice I walk in maybe one or two yards, and as I coach the ball, I'll be in this position to be able to take off to my left or to my right. Again, the key is the balance on the toes. Okay, feet together, but balance on the toes. Ah. Okay, I spoke earlier about my feet position. Once I'm in the right position, I don't know what I, I actually don't think about catching the ball. Uh, practice makes perfect and, and practice becomes a habit, I suppose. So the more time I'd spend doing that, um, the easier it happens in a game and the more it just happens. I think the key to cricket is don't think. As soon as you start thinking on the field, you're in trouble. Make sure you've done all the homework and all the thinking and the practice before you start. Okay, often the ball's maybe two foot to my left or to my right and I'll still dive across. And I say I've got to take a step or just put my hands out. But the key for me is a, catching, is a catch of the ball, get my head in line with the ball. Okay, so for me to, to dive, it means my head and my body is right behind the ball as opposed to standing still and catching it there. Okay, you can see the distance, it's like batting I suppose. You want your eyes to be over the contact point. So for me the contact point when I'm catching is there and the closer my head is to the ball, the more chance of success. Caught, Jonty Rhodes grabs it out of the air as Russell goes off to X team. Those overhead catches are always fairly difficult. If they're chest high, you know, it's always easy to get your head behind it. But when they go above your head, it's always difficult to follow the ball right into your hands. I remember the photographer who actually took a snap of that the instant that I caught the ball, and you can kind of see it in my fingertips. There was almost two fingers on the ball, and that was about it. And I managed to hold on to it just by when I rolled over, my elbows didn't bump the ground. That is an absolutely fantastic catch. You can see where my eyes are. My eyes are following the ball right into the fingertips. It, it's po possibly a misnomer. I mean, you, you might not watch the ball right into your hands. But I know that when I have caught the ball, I've been really focused on watching the ball from the guy's Rhodes, back into my hands. Jonty Rhodes. Jonty Rhodes knows he can only just get a hand to it, but look at that for concentration. He is special. OK, the key for me in, in, the, in the cover area or backward point area is not just to stop the ball, try and cause panic among, amongst the batsmen. And if you cause panic, it's going to be hesitation, chance to run out. So it's no good just stopping the ball, that's half the job done again. Okay, I want to be able to get to a strong power base. It's not always about getting back up to your feet. I've learned to throw from my knees. But now, all I want is a power base. And that can be, as I said, on my knees or standing up. So the key for me, once I've stopped the ball, is get to a base of power straight away. Absolutely brilliant. Run out, gone. He's gone. I think in that whole run out drill, you can actually see me doing a few things. And uh, in the slow motion, I think you can see my eyes looking at the, at the keeper's stumps and then seeing Ganguly stranded in the middle and changing my mind and throwing it to the, the bowler's end where Jacques Kellis was waiting. If you hesitate when Rhodes is anywhere near the ball, you're lost. Yeah. He's caught, brilliantly caught by John T. Rhodes. It doesn't matter where I feel, it's not just about being a backward point. I think the same principles apply, you know, it's not just about your feet position. It's about wanting the ball and being hungry for the ball to come to you. Uh, Pat Simcox is bowling, especially to a guy like Sachin Tendulkar who likes to get on after the spinners. I know that I'm going to be in business at mid-wicket, so that's where I want to be. And that's where I'm expecting every ball to be as well. Have a drive. In the air, brilliantly caught! And I think it's that hunger, just to, to make an impression on the field and just really enjoy yourself. That I think is a, you know, all of us can feel, we all have that sort of ability. But what separates a good fielder from an average fielder? Someone who actually wants to be there and make a difference. As a backward point fielder, and especially in one day cricket, I've found I've actually got to try and read the batsman. I must try and anticipate what is going to happen. Um, in one day cricket, the guys bowl a lot in the channel, so backward point's a busy area. In the old days, five years ago in one day games, the first five, ten overs of the game, you had to be in close watching the one. Now, Jay Surya, Adam Gilchrist, they're smacking the ball from ball one. So you have to be able to get in and save the ones and stop the balls that are hit hard. So anticipation is the key. I'm trying to read what he's doing by watching his bat position, his body position. Obviously, if he's defending the ball, it's a different shot to a cut or a drive. So I've, in my 10 years or 14 years at backward point, I've kind of had to work out and learn to try and read the batsman's body language as to where the ball's going to go. It doesn't work every time, but sometimes it gives me the edge. He'll be out here if it hits, even if it doesn't. If he goes here, he's not defending. If he's going here or going here, He's looking to drop and run. They talk about 
Tendulkar, the Lara, seeing the ball early. I mean, I, I don't see it earlier than anybody. I just think it's anticipation is the key. It's, it's my awareness of what's happening around me, but my willingness to get involved. John T. Rhodes, outstanding. Absolutely magnificent from John T. Rhodes. That saved a certain boundary. That is that is the difference. I mean, you, you want guys who are going to be focused, switched on every time the ball is bowled for every over of the day, whether it be freezing cold day in the UK or blistering hot in Sri Lanka or India. You know, if you've got someone who can have the same level of concentration in over one and over 90, um, he's going to be a good fielder if he wants to be a fielder. So I think it's application of your, of your abilities as opposed to someone with special gifts or talents. It looks great, the fielding, when you pull off a good stop, but it, it does, the ground hurts. Try it again. And once again, he's good enough. Now he's got two to rub. When you bounce and you hit the ground hard, um, you end up with the grass burns. And, and if you're doing it five, six days a week, uh, it's going to take its toll. And I suppose a lot of the guys are thinking too, um, I've got a career that's going to span 10 years. How can I save myself or pace myself? And unfortunately, it's never been the way I've, or fortunately, I think, it's never been the way I've played. I've never had a long-term goal. Not, Jonty can't be beaten again. Trouble, they're both at the same end. Someone's gone and it looks like it'll be Mark War. And you can put that one down to Jonty with his brilliant save. The reason why I stop so many is because I throw my body at every ball that goes past me. I'll never die wondering if I could have stopped the ball. You know, often the guys will bowl a bat, bowls a bad ball and goes for four and the, the batsmen stand and just ask the crowd to throw it back. I mean, even if it's two metres past me, I'm still going to put in an effort. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to save every ball that comes past. I mean, I take pride in my position. I'm the captain of backward point and I don't want anybody to hit the ball past me. Who else? Absolutely brilliant. It, it is fairly bruising. You, you do bleed a bit. And the, the biggest problem for me is I get whiplash. When I dive and stop the ball, my hands are out. My first thought are, are about stopping the ball as opposed to how am I going to land safely. So I get a really stiff neck. The physio and I are best friends. I spend a lot of time on the physio's bed recovering and, and manipulating my neck, getting it back into position. And I suppose maybe that's why people don't want to. If you think about the poor guys in India, they've got to go back and play on fields which aren't great. And I think if I had to grow up, Spending five days a week on, on those bumpy outfields, maybe John T. Rhodes, the fielder, would never have existed. Even though I missed the stumps, I gave myself more chance by taking one extra yard, getting the body positioned upright, pointing with the leading arm, and trying to get the throwing arm all going in a straight line. Having a third umpire with a, with a camera, you know, before the camera came along, the benefit of the doubt went to the, the, the batsman. So you had to run a bloke out by about a metre for the, the umpire to feel comfortable in giving him out. Whereas nowadays, if he's out by half an inch, he's going to be out. Or if his bat's on the line, he's going to be out. You know, so what Bob Wilmer tried to do as a, as a South African coach was try to get me to take an extra step, gain my balance. Because I was tending to throw the ball off balance. So that's one aspect of my game that did change with technology. Okay, power, power base, stable power base. Front arm pointing and the right arm coming over the top of the, past the ear. My head and my arms all in the same line. <coughs> so the key for me as a fielder there was diving and stopping the ball and then getting up to a solid position as quickly as possible. This distance here is a bit far for me to throw from my knees, so I want to get to my feet and be solid as soon as I can. Okay, you don't always get it right because you've got to happen in a quick, uh, got to happen quickly, but I want to be as solid as I can either from my knees or on my feet. World Cup. I mean, everything was right. What a magnificent piece of work from John T. Rhodes. That's just about as good as anything I've ever seen him do. Yeah, there we go. I said just a one. <laughs> well, I've seen everything now. Angus Fraser taking a quick single to John T. Rhodes. Well, what I've always enjoyed is just being out there and, and having the privilege, because it is a privilege. I mean, regardless of whether you're playing for your county, your club, or for your, or for your country, you know, it's a real privilege to be on the field and to do the kind of things that we do and get paid for it. I can't believe someone is that silly to pay me for, for what I do. But I think the attitude to have, though, is it's fun. And it's something that I've grown up doing. I've enjoyed cricket from day one. I think that's probably why the reason why I'm still playing, is that I'm, I'm really enjoying what I do. The sacrifice that you make, the time you spend away from your family and your home, uh, it's not about how you financially compensate it, it's just that I'm really having too much fun to give it up at this stage. Fielding at short leg and silly point are specialist positions, so they require specialist practice. Ian Bell talks about some of his experiences of fielding close to the bat. 
I think when you're a youngster, certainly when you come into first class cricket, you seem to get shoved into that position. And I sort of remember doing it at Warwickshire and sort of did it quite well, which was probably a mistake. And I've been stuck with it ever since now. Um, well, someone's hitting it hard, trying to get out of the way. But I mean, generally, um, sort of trust yourself, really. I mean, it's all reaction based, I think, in there in the catches. But, uh, you know, certainly uh, staying as low and, you know, as balanced position as possible. Well, obviously, but, with uh, reaction catches, I don't want to be sort of knocking my knees either. So I want to be being able to get them so they're bottom of ankle or be able to move so oh, everything's generally in this solid position to even keep my weight going forward I don't want to be sort of going backwards or in a way too short or too too wide either I want to be in a position that I can sort of move my hips and really pretty flexible really but like I say keep my head and hands you know well in, well in front of me so I can actually just get the ball really. It's something you can't really uh, certainly practice a lot of in terms of how you know when you're certain players who hit the ball very hard in those areas so it's difficult to try and get the similar practice a lot of it is reaction based it's just trying to get uh, you know short hits off the bat that you know come quickly and you just have to try and catch as much but like I said you can't really emulate because the feeling is completely different because you know in practice you're not going to get hit he's trying to stay down as as long as possible so it's, it's sort of the legs are pretty sore after practice I can tell you that one thing I try and practice is to try and keep coming forward at the batter as much as possible I think that's the one thing certainly if someone starts hitting the ball hard at you is to then you try and you sort of come away from it and your, your balance goes away and your head starts to go away. Lost I know Morsey talks a lot about catching anyway, you need to get your head towards the ball and you know, that's something I try and do as well, is to stay low but going towards the batter rather than going away because you know, you're know going to catch a lot more actually if you stay down and going towards him than you know, by going away. Because it's, it's such a, a split second um, you know, catch that's going to come at you, if you're blocked in the way then you're obviously going to lose speed or actually drop the ball because you weren't going to give with it. So it's, it's generally in a way trying to get my hands out there so if it does react I can just get my body and then obviously when the speak I can just go with it rather than being blocked in here so obviously I want to get them out there as much as possible so I can just go with the ball. For me it's just keeping it simple and you know trying to trust myself, trust, trust the bowler as well I mean that's the hardest thing as well I mean it's probably uh, nice in a way you know certainly at international level you can have a bit of trust in your, in your bowlers that you aren't going to get too many full tosses or long hops that you're going to get hit with so uh, yeah it's nice to, to have that feeling but um, you know for me it's just a matter of you know, some will stick, some won't. It's that kind of position, you know, you can't practice too much at it, but it's pretty reaction based, really. A lot of the blows you can get, obviously, are fleshy, really. Um, so they sting for a bit, and then that's it, not too bad after a while. Ouch. Yes, now, England don't like need that. Try and cover the main things, and, you know, if you get hit on the flesh, then obviously it's a bruise, but you sort of get on with it. Uh, a bit of relief, to be honest, when you're on the offside, I can tell you. <laughs> But um, really, I mean, you're probably a little bit straighter on the wicket. You're looking for something, probably the pad first, then bat, and you know you're probably coming more towards the wicket, um, and you're obviously looking to probably you know stay and, and catch low ones by your foot. I think with the short leg, you a lot of the times when you're on that side and you're a bit square of the wicket, you're coming off the glove, and it can be a bit more loopy. Or, or so there are, are differences, but I mean generally, I think offside, you, you're catching a lot more around your, your ankles really than than you would do on the, on the leg side. I'd expect more balls to be around, sort of lower, and then trying to dive onto the wicket as well, really. So generally, if it's a right-hander, then I know I'm going to probably have to go more to my right than I will to my left. So, you know, instinct is to be going that way. And then if it is obviously an aggressive shit, I'm going obviously up and out the way. And then otherwise, I'm looking probably at balls that are going to be around this sort of area, really. Offside, obviously, I'm going to go upwards because obviously a lot, of the, a lot of the balls will go on the floor and... You know, I'll jump and turn, and then on the leg side, obviously, I'll go as low as possible because generally someone's going to they're going to try and hit it. They'll try to go upwards, I guess, as well. That way, if it's obviously a silly point, I'm jumping up and I'm trying to get my feet out the way or get everything out the way. And then, if it's obviously leg side, then I'm obviously trying to get a small. Generally, the padding's in front here and the helmet, so I'm trying to get ideally into that kind of position. So if it does hit me, either hits me on the helmet or the pads. So obviously, I don't want to turn too much, but ideally, I'm trying to get into a position where it's just the paddings, you know, in front. And hopefully, we're right. It's not always the best position when you've got someone, someone like a Matthew Hayden or someone like that who's a really good sweeper of a ball and hits it hard and along the floor, you know, right at you. So that, that can not be so enjoyable. But again, it's a great position when, you know, the atmosphere and the game's in a, in a good position. You've got a Flintoff, you know, roaring in or a Panasar who's, you know, creating sort of a, an environment where it's all could, you know, it could be in the game at any minute. So, um, yeah, it has its pluses and negatives, definitely. Get him, yeah! And that's a great catch. Ian Bell, the young man there at short leg, takes a one-handed catch.